Welcome to Advent Worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church and to our inclusive family of faith. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Light one candle for hope. Because the world is broken and the wait is long, the hope just won't let go. Hope holds space for all our longings, lingers on the edge of a harsh reality like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ with us.
call to confession. In this season of hope, peace, joy, and love, how often do people receive these gifts from us? As we begin our journey through Advent, let us put down those failures and foolish behaviors which keep us from getting very far. Join me as we pray together, saying, Holy God of Advent, we confess that it is easy to be afraid, afraid of problems both real and imagined, afraid of our neighbors, afraid of ourselves. It is easy to stop dreaming, to give up, to forget that God can do the impossible. It is easy to think today will always be the same as yesterday. It is easy to fall into the pit of despair, to overlook the signs of hope. Forgive us, God of hope, for our lack of imagination and our preference for the easy path. Instead, kindle in us the fire of hope which can outshine fear. Turn us again to the path of Jesus Christ, the path that starts not at the throne, but at a humble manger. Open our hearts and minds to embrace the impossible in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, we come to this water knowing in these waters all our fears can be quenched and the impossible becomes possible. Into the valleys of death, Jesus comes with life. Into the shadows of the world, Jesus brings light. Into the brokenness of our lives, Jesus brings forgiveness and peace. Do not be afraid. Our sins are forgiven. Alleluia! Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Prayer for Illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with hope what you say to us today. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ru ruler of the region of Itcherea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
next gospel reading this morning comes from Luke 1, verses 5 through 25. Listen to this. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, He was chosen by lot, according to custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. 
Zechariah said to the angel, hmm, how will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Listen to those divine words. Do not be afraid. That phrase will center our Advent season this year, reminding us of God's assured presence, even in the midst of the impossible of crazy dreams, of things we don't understand. What are you afraid of? Are you scared of the dark, of clowns or spiders or heights? Are you scared of being alone or maybe of being around other people? Have you ever seen the Christmas classic movie, A Christmas Story. Little Ralphie has a dream to own a very special Red Ryder BB gun. He's surrounded by adults, however, who echo the same fear. You'll shoot your eye out. They're afraid, and they tell him it's impossible. But that doesn't stop Ralphie from hoping and eventually receiving the best Christmas present ever. Fear, hope, the impossible becoming possible. All of these ingredients make up not only a Christmas story, but also our Christmas story. The one we set our sights on today. Advent is our season of preparation, of waiting for the Christ child to be born once more. We have our favorite Advent traditions. Some we can do this year, like Advent wreath lighting and decorating the church. Others will have to wait, like Christmas caroling to our homebound friends and our children's Christmas pageant and Christmas party. We will have the opportunity for new traditions, though, as well, like a Christmas hymn sing on Facebook Live on December 16th. We catch a glimpse of some other rituals here in the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, the old priest and his faithful wife. While they lived in the hill country, they came in routinely for Zechariah to tur turn to serve at the temple. And lo and behold, this time he even got the privilege to bring the incense offering in the very special section of the temple for worship. It's there, 
in that holy space by himself with the rest of God's people gathered outside for worship, that he encounters the angelic messenger Gabriel, who boldly proclaims, Do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your old wife is going to have a son, and he's going to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord, the Messiah. That's certainly a lot to take in, even for a priest. Here's an angel of God speaking to the deepest hopes of his heart, the yearning for a child the joy for his faithful wife, the hope for the long-awaited Messiah. Could all of this good news really be true? Even though he is faithful and righteous and blameless, Zechariah struggles to wrap his head and heart around this. How can it be possible There are so many barriers in the way. Can't you see that, Gabriel? Don't you know how long we have been praying? How long we have been waiting and watching for this moment? Can this really be it? Can it really happen to me? For both Zechariah and our gospel author Luke know that it had been 400 years since the end of the book of Malachi, the last book in what we call the Old Testament. The people were waiting. They were praying for a change, for the Messiah to come. They were watching, listening, hoping, generation after generation after generation. Maybe it had grown harder day by day, to keep that hope alive. Maybe it was harder day by day to envision a time when things would be different, when liberation would arrive, when the pandemic, I mean oppression, would be over. Maybe they were getting afraid to hope for something new. Maybe they were tired of being disappointed at another generation without the Messiah. This is a rhythm that repeats itself again and again throughout the story of the people of God. A story of waiting for deliverance. Of waiting for a freedom that's impossible to gain from only human hands. We know a taste of that heaviness, that waiting from this past nine months. We also know the bitterness of disappointment from other times in our lives, of being faithful and righteous and seeking God's will and things still not turning out the way we hoped. We know what it's like to pray and pray and to not get the answers we longed for. We know what it's like for fear to creep in, both the fear of what's possible and the fear of what's impossible. Does that fear start to change our prayers? Do we stop expecting good news? Do we stop believing that that heaviness can be lifted, that prayers matter, that God can change these immovable situations? A Reformed pastor in Michigan, the Reverend Dr. Mark Nellison, writes about the challenges for people of faith today in his commentary on this passage. He says, The modern church tends to fear the small, the quiet, and the empty. We also have real doubts whether prayer is of productive value. Our experience with God and our texts teach us that these are exactly the places in which God often prefers to work. Will we ever get used to the way God likes to show up among us in surprising places with such odd and unexpected people in utterly absurd ways? 
the small, the quiet, and the empty. It's a bit like our sanctuary right now. Maybe for some of us it also describes how our Thanksgiving dinners felt, how each week has felt. We drown out the quiet with music or TV. We step over the small with the next big useless thing. We overfill the empty spaces around us, and yet that emptiness in our hearts remains. We fear those very places God can work. And we fear not only the small, the quiet, and the empty, but also the magnificence of God, that our prayers might actually be heard. What if your prayers were answered like Zechariah? Would it be another ordinary day but slightly brighter? Would you get that parking spot you always wanted? that grade you really needed, or relief from chronic pain and illness? Or, if your prayers would ans- were answered, would the world drastically change? Are you praying for the impossible, for the miraculous, for the long-awaited day to arrive? Are you praying for every child in Arlington to have enough to eat? Are you still praying for the pandemic to end? If not, why not? What are you afraid of? That it might not happen or that it might actually happen? Consider your prayer life six years ago around this time. Did you know that in the next few years we would be adding over 80 members to the roles at Westminster, including 14 members this year during the pandemic? Or that we would be serving thousands of hungry children throughout Arlington in our New Day ministry? Or that we would find new life and relationships partnering with Baptist churches and elementary schools? Do you know that I haven't learned my lesson and I keep holding my breath as I take on the impossible task for our church, whether it's a swift gift drive or welcome home baskets for our homeless friends? And you always respond. Still you show me that we do not have to be afraid of the impossible whether it's getting hundreds of gifts for children or finding new life in mainline ministry in the 21st century United States. Now, please hear me clearly. I don't want to deny the hard reality that even as we pray for the impossible, sometimes it may not happen. People pray to be parents, but no child comes their way. Families pray for an illness to be healed, but no recovery comes their way. We pray for an end to this pandemic, and instead we see a surge. We don't know why miracles happen to some and not others. We don't know why some impossibles become possibles and others don't. We don't know all the workings of our God who is bigger than we can ever imagine. But what we do know is our God is a God of new beginnings. Our God is a God of love. God brings water in the desert, new life in the face of death, hope when all others have given up. Our God takes away shame and sadness, and instead brings wonder and joy in their place. And so I'm excited to tell you about another opportunity to witness wonder and joy. Our session has approved one in-person worship service before the end of the year. With a faithful team of volunteers, we're going to have a 15-minute Christmas Eve worship outside in our parking lot. There will still be a full YouTube worship available, but there will be this bonus opportunity to gather with safety precautions in place 
to light our candles and to hum along to silent night and celebrate Christ's birth once more. We will have a lot more details coming your way in the next few weeks. But for me, for session, this is another example of what felt impossible becoming possible with God's guidance and leadership. For even Zechariah eventually accepts the impossible, although he is silenced for the duration of the pregnancy. And Elizabeth finds a joy that she thought was buried forever. And the next step in God's impossible plan is taken as John the Baptist takes shape full of the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. The impossibility of God putting on flesh, of a humble baby boy being the savior of a world, of reconciliation between God and humanity, of grace upon grace, which we can never earn. So this Advent, let's sit in Zechariah's silence. Imagine that, the ability to mute your preacher. Let's sit in God's glory, and let's sit in the message of the angels. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to pray for the impossible, to hope for something different than right now. Do not let the heaviness damper your prayers. Do not let the endless waiting put out your flame of hope. Keep expecting good news. Keep looking for a miracle. Keep trusting that God is the one who will find us in the small, the quiet, and the empty. Keep believing that the God who makes all things new is the one who hears your prayers, who knows the longing in your hearts. For this is Gabriel's Advent message. Do not be afraid of the impossible. Amen. Let us gather around the table to lift up the voices of the people of God. You would gather us together as your beloved children, shouting in joy over us as you sing your love for us on this feast day, bringing us home to your heart. So come, amazing God, come. Come into the hearts and homes and hospitals and all the places that need to know that they are loved, that they are cherished, that they can find joy in you even if nowhere else. Because God, you would surround us with the gifts of your faith and hope that we might share from the abundance of grace, even as you shared yourself from the poverty of brokenness, baptizing us with joy. So come, wellspring of salvation, come. We ask, God, that you come into our community, that you refresh all our health care workers and teachers, that they can continue to make it, to care for the least of these in our community, for those who need it most. We ask you to protect all our essential workers, to keep them safe during what can be a busy time. O oh God, you would guide us in your wisdom, so we might truly know the deep needs of those around us, that we might bless them. You would quiet us in your hope that we might hear the carols of peace sung by the choirs of heaven. So come, spirit of joy, come. Come, God in community, holy and one, come. As we continue to pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Presentation of our lives and offerings. With God, so much can become possible. So with hope instead of fear, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God's table. Pause worship now to offer your gifts online or through the mail. Happy Advent. Please check your email for all the Advent activities at Westminster Presbyterian and the ways for you to get involved to celebrate the spirit of this season that happens no matter what. And so go out into the world, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, help the suffering, and support the weak honor all people, loving and serving through the power of our everlasting Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 